Uh, well, good evening again. Uh, I think I have a little time here uh, to talk about macros. Uh, is there still room in our in our schedule for that, or should I just kind of jump to some of my thoughts on the day? You are now unmuted. Um, pretty sure we have some time. All right, great. Yeah, go cool. for it. Well, I'll just drive into my pre prepared thing to hear that. Yeah, actually, you're right on time, so. Oh, what an amazing thing. I, I just, uh, you know, have been trying to do what well, I, I've got a big thank you planned at the, get, at the end. But let me just say I uh, it's it's been really cool to watch the way that people work together. Absolutely. It's this whole event today has been nothing but awesome and uh, no less like no little part. Thanks to all of the help from all of you guys and um everyone oh yeah it's awesome um yeah with that i'll just um shut up for now and uh take it away corwin who knows how to make make that the default in good old semex all right so i'm gonna try to continue my theme from the previous talk i'm a long time emacs user but i'm a pretty new person to trying to really understand what's going on within Emacs and make my customizations to it uh, simple for what I tend to just think of will work. And maybe that's 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 a nice bow to put on that earlier talk. So, uh, whoops. Uh, let's see here now. It's Control X, Alt I. That's right. And let's try that again. Okay, good. <laughs> so demoing is fun, uh, but I will save most of that for tomorrow where my dear friend and co-collaborator in bringing you the Dungeon Mode project, which is uh, sort of the exciting thing that we, we hope you'll be interested in, um, I think gets a little more of a reveal. Uh, tonight, I'll just uh, close saying um, a few things about the process of making it and continuing my theme of community. Uh, first of all, a specific and upfront shout out to TV's Wasamasa, who um, absolutely shaped and guided this, this program. I, I may have taken out a slide with your name on it, but thank you. Um, so when we think about Emacs macros and the power that they give us, I think about them, the, 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 you know, I think about them as a really deep rabbit hole. They confuse people a lot. And so to try to center myself on that, I remember first that they're, they're going to be talking to us about code. Uh, excuse me. I realize I hadn't set my timer. There we are. Um, so a simple macro syntax is going to generate something that is implicitly confusing to somebody that knows the syntax of Emacs Lisp well. We see something like this, and a veteran I says that X isn't quoted what's going on, but it can be hard to miss. Um, a lot of the functions, as we'll talk about in a moment, that are built into Emacs uh, really are macros. So a lot of Emacs features work this way. It might be scary, but we have to look at it closely if we really want to get friendly with Emacs. Um, let's just jump right into def macro, which is which is our key entry point. And the notes from this talk include the link um, to that. Uh, which which definitely uh, read through a couple of times, and uh, that may take you through into the CLDF macro, which adds the common list, Lisp extensions, and uh, definitely uh, challenging. Uh, I've struggled there, as we'll take a look at in in a moment. Um, so I haven't played too much with CL Maclet. Perhaps success in in that. Uh, keyword space and, and figuring out what the right balance is there will, will give me the confidence to try some more lexical uh, macros. Let me also briefly introduce the comma and back quote if you have uh, 
allowed your eyes to cross when you see these and that's not uh, uh, a shameful shameful thing it's confusing and we should be uh, alerting each other when we when we stick macros in often by putting them in different different library spaces for complicated projects or um, otherwise sort of warning people that this is not an interactive function if you get away with using it like one um, to watch your back the uh, the manual itself talks about macros as being a way of evaluate, you know, as as being um, an evaluator that will take our Emacs Lisp expression and the set of forms that kind of that will feed to it our code. But it also provides us with this concept of an environment, and 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 that's really where the power comes in through that we can have lexical variables and um think about uh bring in some of the capabilities that um can be harder to reach with uh, a, a a pure declarative statement that doesn't allow for uh top level uh, uh asynchronous a asynchronicity uh i'm gonna basically ignore the bike compilation phase for this talk uh in order to have any prayer of getting through it in the remaining uh, nine or eleven minutes or whatever uh but um suffice it to say it that's a scary space and that's 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 really the thing that you want to start learning about as you think about taking taking macros on uh, in earnest. The um, coming back to the comma syntax, then having 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 giving ourselves sort of a working definition for the Emacs Lisp runtime environment, then we can say that macros are are going to inject code back into that stream. Whereas back quote is going to uh, going to give code back to the to the stream or interject, sorry, <laughs> is going to interject uh, back into the stream, uh, sort of uh, a, an exclamatory, excuse me, I'd like to uh, have a value here. And we can take that value from the environment as it exists when our macro is evaluated. Back quote, on the other hand, takes the result from that and uh, and returns it back to the stream for evaluation at the processing level that invoked us. So in other words, perhaps back up to uh, a top level eval expression where our macro is invoked. Uh, wrong way. So um, with what's I'm going to briefly bring you back to the game for just a moment. Um, I won't I won't has I won't linger on the slide, but but briefly, uh, this is a role paper, uh, role playing pen and pencil, um, physical dice tradition that dates back a long time. The, from a technology perspective, it's it's old in the same way that uh, other tools uh, that I like are old. Uh, it's simple to understand, and I can communicate a lot with it with a simple amount of you know typing or scribbling something on a piece of paper. It has a complicated problem space um, of its own. Again, I don't want to get too much into the game here but uh in this in this talk for the last five minutes i'll focus on the process that we took to to automate uh getting data out of the org mode tables which eventually as we'll talk about more tomorrow are used to draw um game maps and other things um here i talk about kind of why we did that i'm going to skip briefly past that and say instead that at a high level it's it's symbolic informatics we're giving a symbolic name to a tile set and then 
uh, and then assigning that tile set some some characteristics like physical speeds, screen space, uh, a variable that we might want to swap in, and so forth. Uh, and you know our project rests heavily on on org mode and its its fundamental capabilities. So the the, the code I'm going to show here is uh, <clears throat> is is focused around sort of a a sticky problem space and in, in the information technology. And I'm I'm a professional uh, software. Uh, software engineer turned uh, technology architect. I support the websites for a recognizable uh, financial services brand that I don't identify just so I don't accidentally end up uh, inadvertently misrepresenting my firm in some financial uh, perspective. If I let some other company slip, it's certain let some other company slip, name slip, or my own, it's certainly no. Um, uh, representation of an opinion other than my own. <clears throat> the uh, so ETL has to do with moving data around. We we have the idea of of a pipeline where we'll be able to verify certain assumptions not nominally about data quality, but it could be about anything before the pipeline starts. Okay, we've got a state where we think it should work if we run it. We have uh, some extraction where we'll ver get our sources and we may have the the opportunity to uh, make some assertions there. And in the transform stage, as well as the load, things get a little dicier to the point where we come out of the load stage and we should have some really solid assertions again that we can even go back and compare to the extract stage. And from this, we have the rudimentaries of a data quality practice. Uh, in this case, we have a number of org mode files that will ultimately be distributed across a number of players' uh, computers. So we might not want to update every part of every buffer. Think it's a complicated problem space, and so we try to take a long-term view of the solution that we needed. Um, so I'll go ahead and open up the fun function the well let's let's actually start with the one that's pretty easy to read and uh i'm going to go ahead and just crank it up huge in case anybody's watching in 480. <laughs> um so this this program is not a work of art it's a simple implementation of the idea that a list uh, an a list of functions that return maybe some data, maybe some data and an entry back into that A list um, can be done quite extensively with very few lines of code. Uh, neither is it an especially tight or thrifty implementation. It's just trying to uh, get the job done with a doc statement for everything. At the heart, um, we see a call to this macro called DM coalesce hash. And that's what I'd like to focus in on. You can see, I think, that something un un unpleasant is happening here. I've got an eval in um, what is, I will share, <laughs> a, a, a fairly central function that, 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 a, that those implementing this ETL pattern are welcome to derive from. That is, this is a default transform that you can get when loading certain kinds of uh, org mode tables that have been uh, properly adorned. And again, we'll get into that all tomorrow. So keeping an eye on time, a couple minutes left, let's look at the macro itself. And I have a slide on this, but let's go ahead and risk getting off page. Oh boy, here we go. So this is my utilities bucket. It has such basic features as give me a hash table with some defaults. I'll think about that later. And, and add to list um, a special version that enables us to be a little cavalier in experimenting with A-list versus hashes versus P-lists. 
we've made a ripe mess for ourselves in the proof of concept area, and it's ripe for someone to write a white paper about when to prefer these things and uh, <clears throat> fix. The merge a list, <laughs> uh, same work here. Let's get let's get down to business. This function has quite a this a macro has quite a doc string. And I think I mentioned earlier that I got myself into trouble with the keyword properties. You can see that we have not only quite a number of them, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of default values, many of which may be relying on the values that are passed in here. This is complicated, and as it turns out, um, I wasn't brave enough in most cases to try to write a Lambda that could understand and replace uh, its own local variable. I just didn't, it didn't save me enough time. Um, this was really easy to re read and write and understand as I thought through my problem. But now as I use it, I, I've i lost a little ground maybe with this and I'm, I'm not even sure I like what I got from uh, the many keyword properties when it, it and we can look perhaps if we have a, the time at what that looks like in uh oh all right i have to separately dismiss and restart that um so that so that's just about my time uh and being respectful of that i want to invite presenters to just jump in at any of the many large pauses i leave uh, as I'll just leave up the doc string for a moment and maybe split the screen and pull open an IM. You are now unmuted. Uh, thank you very much for your talk, Corwin. Um, I think you still have like uh, maybe three or four more minutes if you want to quickly wrap up. Okay. So three or four more minutes I can easily spend on thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> I might switch to that if there aren't questions on the pad. Um, would you like me to pull up the pad or are you looking at it? I am, I bookmarked it. I am pulling the tab and I'll bring it in. Okay. All right. This is the wrong etherpad. Thanks for the link. All right. Um, so I think I'm looking for macros. Uh, okay. Key message. Sure. So the the key message is that it's um, it's a jungle out there macros along with any other design can leave you in a position where you have a nice api and i can show you other examples you can find them in the dungeon mode source of many many other places where i use this exact same formula quickly sketching out how a character sheet or another big data set needs to needs to figure out what tables are going to be interesting from the collection of files and then load up the uh, tile set and the uh, layout file from that. And, and, and I mean, it works. Uh, this The project is moving forward with this. I have the flexibility that I need. But here I am evaling my own code to make darn sure even if I get by, by compiled, uh, this macro doesn't uh, does get evaluated in the user's real runtime. Clearly a design fail. So that would be the key point of my talk is is to present this design fail and uh, thank um, thank the community, but especially Wasamasa for for some patience. And, and let me add at this moment that uh, he was sort of frustrated with me. They were sort of frustrated with me. I think I didn't qualify pronouns um, with um with doing this the, the first the, the, this was one of our first interactions and the feedback was why is this a macro full stop and uh that's a great message actually and i, I and i hope that uh maybe this can encourage further talks uh, across the subject about you know hey wait a minute macros are really fantastic as i hope i made clear you can do a tremendous amount about it 
uh, with them and we rely on them for almost all the fun goodies um, from, you know, defund to secu. Um, I want to get to my, my thank you. So let me just peek back at the pad. Um, uh oh. Well, that was actually in a scratch buffer, so I'll have to sort of read it cold off my notes. Um, but I'll but I'll switch to I'll 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 say a couple of thank yous if you don't mind, Alvin. In addition to the big thank you that I hope was implied by my shout out to Wasamasa, um, I also want to thank you, Alvin, for um, your kindness in uh, extending to the project as well as to me the the chance to present here and 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 you've you've also just done a lot of great stuff for our project thank you very much for that and sasha 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 chuan chow i can't I, i'm sorry I, I can't seem to um Chua. It's okay. it's tough. Chua. <laughs> Chua. sasha chua I'll, I'll get there um, thank you so much for the inspiration that you are to our whole community. I also want to thank the presenters um, for just being so flexible and uh, nagging back through the whole thing, and especially to Leo, who has done so much to drive the show today. Um, I th This is a fractious tent at times, and sometimes it is indeed a little bit of a circus. But uh, I am learning so much so fast. I'm just inspired by how much Emacs can teach us. Thank you, uh, Corbin, for your kind words. And, you know, about me, of course, but all about, you know, all of us and the conference. And, you know, indeed, thanks to everyone who's helped, uh, including the speakers, of course, without whom, you know, Emacs Conf really wouldn't have been Emacs Conf. Um, and, you know, it's been a pleasure knowing you and working with you, um, I guess, um, from afar for the most part on dungeon mode, like helping, helping with like small things here and there. But um, yeah, it's been my pleasure and it's great to have you and um, everyone else, you know, part of the community. And for me to be part of the, the community, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. It's 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 a it's an honor, and I don't use that word an awful lot because I sort of sort of smirk at it, but it um, gets us in a lot of trouble. Honor does, but <laughs> it should be a sure time to use it. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs>